gentlemen, hello and welcome back to MLG Classics, best of the best. We have 32 of the best games in MLG StarCraft II history, and we need your help on finding out which one is the absolute best. We have a list of 32 of the best games, and we're having a single elimination bracket to find out who's going to advance to the round of 16, round of 8, round of 4, round of 2, and find out which one is the best. Remember to vote, get on Twitter, and we'll give you instructions on the screen on what to hashtag. Generally, it's hashtag MLG as well as hashtag Player A versus Player B. We just saw In Control versus Illusion. This is in bracket number two at the very bottom. And this game is going up against a match between, a game I should say, between Idra and Boxer from MLG Orlando 2011. Now, a little bit of context behind this match. Boxer, this is his second MLG coming all the way from Korea, a legend in both StarCraft II and in Brood War. Everyone knows his name. Idra, the American hero, he went over to Korea for a time to try to, to make it work in StarCraft. Everyone knows his name, considered the bad boy of StarCraft II. Call him what you want, very popular, very good at the game of StarCraft II. Here's the setting. In group play, they met. Idra 2 owed Boxer wasn't a big deal at all. They ended up meeting again. Boxer dropped down to championship losers bracket, I think round four. He took out Stefano, 2-1. Then Boxer took out Sase, 2-1. Boxer is tearing up everyone, making a run through the lower bracket. And then he meets Idra once again. This time, Idra starts up 2-0. So Boxer has to try to make the comeback happen. Guess what happens? They get tied up 3 to three. So this game is game number seven between Idra and Boxer, a rematch. Who's going to stay alive in 2011? MLG Orlando, the American or the Korean King? Let's find out. I'm sure you guys understand is we're going to find out who's going to win in between Slayers, Boxer and Idra. Okay, so the map is dual site. I don't know what kind of strategy Slayers, Boxer is going to use. Um, we're just going to have to wait and see. Over here in the bottom left starting location, we have the best macro player, but he struggles early on to control his units to stop unusual strategies. Give it up for Idra. If you want to see this guy win, make some noise. And over here in the upper right, the story almost becoming a fairy tale. The legendary old school player from StarCraft 1, known for his insane strategies, pulling him out in StarCraft 2. Give it up for Slayer's Boxer. A lot of support for both players out here. It's hard to imagine who is going to win this right now. I thought so for sure that Idra was going to have it. I but know. I was even telling Artosis on the break after the, after the first win at Slayer's Boxer, and I said, well, he's, you know, I just probably could just win the next one. Yeah. You know, I, I, I did actually say that. And now in this last now break, Artosis was just like, WTF, mate. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea what's going to happen. I don't know what kind of, uh, there's only a, there's, okay, look, guys, there's a limited term for Cirque, especially with a game being as new as it is in StarCraft 2, to how many uh, wacky strats you can do in That's TBC. Right. There's just, well, there's a limit because we still learn the game. The thing is, we'll never know the limit as the limit of wacky Terran strategies versus Zerg approaches infinity. We this see the Slayer's Boxer asymptote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, Idra, I would not be shocked if he starts scouting for proxies, which is what he's doing here. That's right, look at this. This guy is just, he's going to look everywhere. He's thinking that Slayer's Boxer is going to do something wacky. So far, Slayer's Boxer not really doing anything wacky. He's just getting a gas, making some Marines, walling in so he can't be scouted as well. And there's actually no Overlord going over towards Slayer's Boxer's base, really, in a way that they can scout for gas. So there's not going to be any way for Idra to know if there's tech or not. So Idra actually already in a bad position. Idra. Uh, super prepared for uh, an all-in, a rush of some sort, and then Drone gets to the base, he says, oh my god, he just walled in. He looks like, you know, he might be doing a completely ordinary strategy. Uh, even this Overlord, actually, if you notice the scouting pattern, sent up, like, follow my screen like this, it's, um, this is just check for barracks that might be hidden this side of it, uh, on this part of the map. So he just checked in all locations, and now, as far as I can tell, Slayer's Boxer is opening up with the most textbook strategy uh, in TVZ right now in StarCraft 2. Yeah, Reactored Hellion, but 
Will he do something else with this? Will he turn it into double reactor Hellion? Will he turn it into two-factor blue flame Hellion? We just don't know yet. Yeah. And once we see, that's going to be oh. very interesting. That ooh, okay, he's going to no, take a gold base with wait, it. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding you, Tasis. This is your reality. <laughs> the universe, <laughs> the arc of the universe bends against the will of Hydra right now. I don't know what to say. This is, this sucks for Hydra. <laughs> It's a good way to put it. Yeah, Tasis. I mean, I could, I could try to, 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 that was very to decorate technical. that statement and make it as flowery as you want, but this is just not good for the guy. Well, we'll have to see what he does with this. I really would not be surprised if we do see another factory uh, pretty soon here, actually, from Slayer's Box. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're correct. You really wouldn't. And yeah. in fact, there oh, you go. It is double reactor Hellion. See, this you is. You and your crystal ball scene. That's the future. it, Tasteless. Oh, boy. Okay, oh, so oh, oh. it got spotted. Wow, huge by Hydra. Huge, huge move. That's so, actually cool. so good that uh, he managed to to spot that. Yes, because and go ahead. He's actually just throwing up spine crawlers now, which is the exact right choice. If you make a cancel like that, that is so gigantic that you have forced him to cancel that that you just need to start defending. Yeah. You. Um, he knows that something's coming. He was doing some mineral intensive build. What do you get with minerals? You get marines, you get hellions. Yes. And spine crawlers are good against both. And I think Slayer's Boxer now sees these spine crawlers and thinks, oh no. Notice he doesn't show too many of them. He does not want Hydra to know how many yeah. he's making. This, a lot of this strategy is about the surprise factor. If he can just run in with like eight and run by spine crawlers, only lose one or two, then he is going to kill so many drones. He's going to peek in here again. Now, does he see the? He sees, yeah, three Hellions. But you think about it, three is an odd number, and right now the Hellions are coming out at, f at rates of four. Yeah. So he would actually look at that and maybe not think that there's uh, going to be double reactor Hellions. Definitely. You know, he, he doesn't have any idea about this yet. So your Box are doing a great job of controlling the entire map. There's very little scouting going on for Hydra. Uh, he has not made a Roach Warrant. He you know has what? only Zerglings and Speed on the way, a couple Spine Crawlers and some Queens. You know what I think actually happened is I think Idris saw the three Hellions and said, oh wait, I need to chill out and go back to making drones, which is what he didn't do in uh, the second game that we casted earlier mm -hmm. today. Uh, I, these I, two. And now he's going to go back into a macro game, so this strategy might work. I got to tell you something. Uh, I am getting some anxiety, Tasteless. I know. This is actually insane. Slayer's Boxer is making a lot I'm of getting, Hellions. I'm getting stressed out watching this game. MLG is going to have to pay me in Xanax. This is just too tense. <laughs> uh, we are going to have to wait and see, guys. Basically, here's what's going to happen. It's going to boil down to this one moment where the Hellions speed across the map. And, and I, I, oh, wait, 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 wait. This wait, wait, is very just... important. Can he scout how many Hellions are in here? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. That's a huge amount of information. Slayer's and... Boxer has to go right now. All right, that's triggered the rush. There's actually no turning back now. Uh, we have, let me check on the unit counting. We have 16 Hellions right now. Uh, we, uh, do we have a Roach Warren making? No. No. No Roach Warren. A lot of Hellions are coming down. This is a huge amount right here. And we'll see. Can Hydra actually hold this off? He's even going over after Spine Crawler's Tasteless. He doesn't care what's here. We do have some Banelings morphing. If those can connect, it'll be huge. Nice little surround for just a moment. The Spine Crawler's dealing huge amounts of damage, but Slayer's Boxer continues some beautiful micro. All right, he's taken out uh, almost all the queens, and here's the truth: he just he could take out this spine crawler. I know Hellions are good against him, but uh, there are just too many of them. Uh, he's microing back to the spine crawler. Uh, Idra knows he just has to survive this, and he should be fine. But remember, more and more Hellions are going to be spilling down here, uh, reinforcing this attack. Well, that is a lot of spine crawlers, man, and he continues to make nothing but Hellions. This could be very bad for Slayer's Boxer, especially with that Spire on the way. Beautiful Baneling connection. Slayer's Boxer with very few Hellions left. He only, well, very few being 11, but comparatively to before, not that many. So many Spines are out, Tasteless, and that Spire halfway done. Slayer's Boxer, though, very smartly, is adding four Barracks. Ah, and a Spire's on the yeah. way. And also an Engineer Bay, so looks like he's going to get ready for this. Whoa. It's a lot of barracks. That's All right, so he's actually, he's going to keep you. Oh, hold that thought. The ramp, the ramp. Is it protected enough? Beautiful Banelings oh, back and no. forth, back and forth. And he's trying to get up here. Will the Banelings actually connect? Oh, my God. He gets in. The Spire is about to finish. 
Hydra just has a little bit to run his Jones, running them to the side, trying to take out these Queens. Three Mutas on the way. The Hellions, of course, cannot attack air units. Uh, right now, Slayer's Boxer, if you look at his money, uh, he's at uh, 1.3k. That's because he's microing this so hard he can't even go back to his base uh, and spend his money. Zerling's around. Uh, it looks like he's gonna hold it. We have eight mutas on the way, though, Tasteless. Slayer's Boxer, where are your missile turrets, sir? He only has 37 SCVs against 52 <laughs> drones. He's, he's at 1.4 or 1.5k right now with minerals. As you can see, he was having to control the Hellions so much, he just could not uh, go back to his base. I mean, there's a moment, and it's, it's not that Slayer's Boxer is bad. Slayer's Boxer is good. He just, you have to know priority, and actually, wait, when do you <laughs> focus on what? By the way, there was like 30 Hellions made that in this game so far. Only four drones have died. One of them to Actually, we need to repeat that again. Out of 30 Hellions made, only four drones were killed, and the whole function of that attack is to kill the drones. That's right. Well, we have the Mutalists coming up, starting some harassment. Very well done by Hydra, just getting what he can get right now. There are some missile turrets out, taking out something like a reactor, very, very valuable. It takes a long time to build that. We have the uh, Mutalists coming in here, getting the tech lab. Um, he wants to get rid of uh, any opportunity for siege tanks to come out because, of course, siege tanks in siege mode are sort of the counter uh, to banelings. That is which, quite true. Yeah, which Idra is going to be dependent on. Note he's making the command center in the very center of the map. And now, here's the situation. Is, is Idra survived the cheese, okay? The question now is, can Slayer's Boxer survive a standard uh, Terran versus Zerg? Because that's actually yeah. the way that this is uh, transitioned into. Is uh, Idra lost like queens, he lost zerglings. He didn't lose drones. So he can mm. keep making uh, an army. But uh, Slayer's boxer now is, is going to have to just go marine siege tank. And we know Idra normally wins in that. That's quite true. We uh, do have boxer also down about 40-ish supply, just a little bit less than that. But a lot of that is just because his macro fell behind. So as he catches up on depots and starts his production really in earnest, he's going to catch up quite a bit supply-wise. But his economy is behind. 50 drones to 60, or rather 69 drones to 50 SCVs, three base to two. All right, uh, the gold base here is going to be probably, well, actually, I don't know if this would be the focal point or not for Idris. Sometimes in Terran versus Zerg, it gets to a point in time where you stop attacking expansions and start attacking uh, wherever the layer is and the tech is. And we have a nice little muse harassment here. You might take out another reactor. In fact, it does. And Hydra will get out of there. Oh, Ooh, a wild Thor appears. <laughs> <laughs> um, the expansion hatchery over here almost done. And we have uh, two gases over here. So this is when uh, Hydra now is in his element. This is Hydra in his natural habitat. He has a lot of bases. He's upgrading. He is, his hatchery is all hotkeyed. His fingers. Uh, <laughs> Uh, making his fingers are on his hands. His fingers on his hands. They're fingers clicking, hitting the keys and keyboard. So. I was trying to make a statement that was far too fancy for me to uh, hammer together. And now we have uh, the Mutas just, just moving around the Terran's base because what Eider wants to do is the moment that Slayer's boxer leaves his base, the Mutalists go back in, and that's yes. why the turrets and the Thors are so necessary. I wonder what the plan here is going to be for Slayer's boxer. He's already made his third command center, but what is he going to use it for? Will he go over and take a third base? Will he just try to push out with a strong two-base uh, timing? I don't know. You know, he could just keep the orbital here and keep landing mules, but he's going to mine this out pretty quickly. Oh, I believe we just saw an SCV killed off. You know, looking at this game, Tasteless, I don't think that there is a two-base timing that exists that no, I can know. That's possibly win this too. game. I don't care well, if it's Bomber trying to pull it off. Yeah, I mean, l l look at actually how much of the, ma I the map either has. He's even dropping creep which we rarely see even with players on the GSL. Hold that thought. The Thor, I can't even see it. Well, it that's because it's dead, All tasteless. Right. And the Mutalist just moving through here, causing just a lot of damage. Hydra has maxed out. It's a pretty serious bruise. Hydra just left on Slayer's Boxers, uh, main base. And again, I want to I mention this because we actually never, ever, ever see this. Uh, this. The players actually sending out their overlords all over the map and dropping creep. It's actually very He's true. actually, he's, the map is going to be covered in purple pretty soon. That uh -oh. is right. He's got uh -oh. to be careful. He's got to siege these tanks oh, right now. No. Oh, my God. Hydra with a gigantic attack. 
trying to target down the Banelings, but no, the Siege Shanks not hitting what they should, and the Banelings causing massive damage. And Hydra knows exactly how to do it. We've seen this from both of these players. They go and they do the, as much damage as they possibly can, and the moment they have just a little bit of doubt, they turn around. Now, here's the problem, though, is Hydra actually left, and he actually missed this. That's right. Boxer is going to go over and take that base. It's very risky. Hydra could easily make a ton of units and go hit that and force it to at least lift off, if not kill it. All right, he's going to go over here. Once again, for the Tech Lab, so smart. He says, no more siege tanks for you, Slayers, Boxer. And as you can see, he's uh, going to turn around. Don't you love the way the Thor looks when it's on the medevac and fetal position like that? Yeah. Just cracks me up. <laughs> All right, the uh, Mutalisks, he needs to stay active with him. It's weird, actually, Artosis, because of all the places on the map, he's just, like, not looking at this part. Think about this. Yeah. This is the most... Okay, oh. now he knows. And that is a lot of Mutalisks. Fortunately for them, the Thor is there, and they are weak against Thor types. And I think we're going to have another move here. Eider just going to try to uh, oh, just bludgeon him here. Oh, boy. This is absolutely going to clean this expansion up, and Slayer's Boxer has way overextended himself. The Max Hydra against sub-100 supply Boxer. This might actually be the final blow, Tasteless. Yeah, I think this is the killing blow. Slayer's Hydra. Boxer is on life support right now, and that's not going to be around for much longer. Hydra's about to pull the plug, and he's not even going to feel bad about it. Slayer's Boxer being punished here. You can't keep cheesing like that over and over again. Statistically, you're just not going to win that many times. Lands his wow, mule, that's and that's it. GG. GG. Holy tamale. Hydra with a huge victory there. This is a new and improved Hydra. And there it is, Idra taking the final game seven over Boxer, eliminating a titan of the game and keeping his hopes alive in 2011. MLG Orlando Boxer out of that event after that loss. Idra would go on to defeat Hongen 2-0, defeat Bomber 2-1, but then would end up falling 1-2 to MC to get fourth place at 2011 MLG Orlando. Definitely one of the spotlights of Idra's career in StarCraft 2. And that'll do it for that set of games, guys. It's now time for you to vote which game should move on. Either A, Idra, versus Boxer or In Control versus Illusion. Get on Twitter right now. Hashtag MLG and hashtag In Control versus Illusion or hashtag MLG, hashtag Idra versus Boxer. Only one can move on to the round of 16 and keep their hopes alive on being the best StarCraft II game in MLG history. Keep in mind, if you're watching the rebroadcast and it's 2 a.m., 4 a.m., I don't care what time it is. If you're watching this right now, if you're watching on YouTube, you can still vote. So, again, get on Twitter. Get those hashtags down because I'm not going to decide. It's not up to me which of these games is better. It's up to you guys voting through Twitter. Thank you so much for your involvement. I've been watching the chat a little bit as well. We got some people talking a lot about Idra versus Boxer. A lot of guys, a lot of people excited for this match and always nice to see these classics happen. So coming up next, guys, uh, we're going to have another set of matches, two fresh ones. We got QXC versus Deer against Huck versus Naniwa. But we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more SE2 Classics. <laughs>